Hey everybody, and thank you so much for tuning into another one of my videos. Um, today I was kind of struggling to come up with what kind of content I wanted to talk about. And um, I decided to just come to you really honestly and from a place of just giving you um, truth and hope um, and a little bit of positivity because I realized that something kind of special happened to me last weekend and I thought that um, maybe it would be helpful to kind of share this story and share some hope for um, anybody out there who might be feeling a little bit discouraged whether that be just in um, regular situations of your personal life or perhaps even in the direct sales world. Um, speaking specifically about direct sales, I know that this industry is tough. Um, yes, we get to be our own bosses and yes, we get the freedom of kind of making our own hours and working our businesses the way we want to work them, um, really having nobody to answer to except ourselves. But I also know now that I'm coming to a two year anniversary of being in this industry and being with Kalaya, I also know that it truly is a roller coaster ride of emotions and of highs and lows and feelings of really great accomplishment, but then also feelings of discouragement and negativity and, um, and struggling. So I wanted to share this story with you because it really made me realize how far I've come in the two years since I've been with Kalaya. And I'm hoping that it will sh share and shed some, um, some hope for any of you who might be feeling like you're just kind of spinning your wheels in your business. So when I first started Kalaya, um, literally just about two years ago to the day, we are now in February of 2020. And I joined this company in January, late January of 2018. So I'm two years into this incredible journey. And when I first started with Kalaya, um, one of the first things that I did was uh, set up a launch party for my business. And um, Gaia, the CEO and founder of Kalaya, um, was willing to come out to Long Island. The company is headquartered in Utah, but she was willing to come out to Long Island to help me with a launch social. And I was so excited that she was gonna come out here and I worked really hard to make it an event that was gonna be successful, that was gonna have people in the room. And I was I was doing well. I was having a lot of you know positive responses from my friends and my family and I knew that I was gonna be able to fill a room here on Long Island. And then I got a little bit um, confident, you know, let's say, and I said, well, if, you know, she's coming out to the East Coast, why don't I also plan a Connecticut event? You know, I'll have her here on the East Coast. We can start with my event in Long Island, and then we can head over to Connecticut, take the ferry over, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get a lot of bang for my buck, right? The CEO's in town, I'll have a Long Island event, and I'll have a Connecticut event. So I um, floated that idea to her. She was absolutely, you know, enthusiastic to help me with two events. And she said, if you can get people in a room in Connecticut, let's make it happen. So I went to work trying to connect with people in Connecticut. Now I did go to college in Connecticut. I have a sister who lives in Connecticut. So I felt like I still have connections there. I should be able to um, put an event together. So with the help of my sister and um, the help of some friends I have in, in Connecticut, I, I tried everything I could think of to get people to an event. We had a date, we had a time, I uh, had a venue, I rented out a room at a restaurant, um, I paid the guy deposit. I mean, this was happening, it was on the calendar, invitations were out. We had a couple of tentatives um, who said they'd try to come, um, some very kind of wishy-washy yeses that I didn't really feel that confident in, and a ton of no's, and then a ton of no responses. And as the event was getting closer and closer, I was really starting to panic, and I was starting to get worried that there was going to be nobody at this event. So um, Gaia was in town. It was my Long Island event, which was a pretty success successful event. It went pretty well, and then the next day was Connecticut. I was actually on the ferry on my way to Connecticut, and I started getting all these messages and texts, and I was messaging with my sister um, of people that were backing out. And basically what was happening right before my very eyes is that this event was just like falling apart, and we were at a point here I was on the ferry about an hour away from the event. We were at a point that there was going to be nobody in the room, literally. 
So I quickly reached out to Gaia. I was so embarrassed and I was so ashamed and I felt like such a failure. And I said to her, I am so sorry to do this, but I think we need to cancel the Connecticut event. I'm getting just all these no's and you know, my sister doesn't think anybody's coming. It doesn't look like I have anybody coming. I don't want you to show up. Maybe you can hop on an earlier flight. You know, she was away from her family, her life. Um, I said, I think I'm just going to get off the ferry and literally get right back on and go home. I, I, I think this is going to be a waste of the time. Nobody's going to be there. And, you know, I, it was a horrible moment for me, especially so early on in my business when I felt like um, I had so much, you know, so many big dreams and big plans and big goals and to kind of have that, um, that kind of sense of failure and having to admit that to the CEO was a really difficult thing to do. But I, I wanted to be honest with her. I didn't want us to be sitting there at this restaurant and paying money if, you know, nobody was going to come in. So um, we ended up canceling the event. Guy was able to take a earlier flight back to Utah. I turned around on the ferry. I went back home. I called the restaurant. They gave me my money back. And it was just sort of a situation that I cringe when I think about it. But it is what it is, right? You have some wins, you have some losses. So I've been walking around with that kind of story in my head for two years now, thinking about how difficult that was. And last weekend, um, so late January, I have a brand partner on my team who's in Rhode Island, and she has a brand partner on her team who is in um, Southern... Massachusetts, like very close to the Connecticut, Northern Connecticut, Southern Massachusetts, very close to that border. And she decided to have a event in Connecticut. And she worked really hard to fill a room. Um, she had about 40 women at this event. And she asked if I would come, you know, and help support her and say a little bit about my journey with Kalaya. And I am her, um, I'm her upline, right? You know, she's in my downline, she's on my team and I wanted to be there to support her. And I said, absolutely. So I took the ferry over for the day and I was there to help her at her event. And it's funny, it wasn't until I was sitting in the room um, at this event in Connecticut two years later when it really hit me and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, like in two years, look at how I've come full circle. When I started this journey two years ago and I couldn't get one person in Connecticut to come sit to learn about this business and this opportunity and these products. And now here I am with a woman on my team who did the work to get people here. I'm just kind of here as a guest, you know, I didn't have to really work to put people in this room. She did that. She found the venue. She, you know, got Gaia into town to come, you know, do a presentation. I was just there to support her and also give a presentation. But looking around at the people in that room, I felt such a sense of accomplishment and pride. And it really just reminded me that when it gets difficult and when you have these failures and you have these disappointments, you just have to kind of dig in your heels and you just have to kind of push through those hard times um, because there is a light at the end of the tunnel and sometimes God has something in store for us that's even better um, than what you were hoping to get in that moment. But we just have to have the patience and we have to have the faith to just sort of hang in there um, and trust that it will work out the way it's meant to work out. Because if somebody would have told me, you know, as I'm on the ferry, on my way home, crying, two years ago, feeling like a failure that I could not get a Connecticut event together. Um, just hang tight. Two years from now, you will have a room full of people in Connecticut and it will be somebody on your team who worked hard to put them there. And you'll just come as a guest and, it, you know, none of the stress of trying to organize it and put it together will be on your shoulders, but you will be benefiting from that event and, and you'll be there to help your teammate, um, you know, grow her business and grow her team, I would have honestly thought they were crazy because at that moment, I couldn't have imagined that. So this is less about Kalaya and more about um, just keeping the faith and staying positive 
whether it's in direct sales or any aspect of your life, I think it's an important reminder and an important lesson um, that we all just have to trust and um, we just have to stay positive and we have to persevere through the tough times. So I hope this brought you a little bit of encouragement today. I, as always, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in about two weeks with my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.